These are my potatoes. I'm going to uh, make some mashed potatoes in a minute. My beeper is going off. These are wanimes. I made these yesterday and I accompanied with them. Um, they're like a tamale, but not even like a tamale. It's made of cornmeal and it's a Puerto Rican dish. And you do it with, um, yesterday I had it with pork meat that I have left over from the day I cooked in the crock pot and some cactus. And it was really good. And then at night, we did some turkey burgers and we cut it up in um, pieces. And again with cactus. So it was wanimes, which is made of cornmeal and pork and cactus. And then at night, it was wanimes, um, turkey burgers cut in pieces, and cactus as well. And I'll be showing pictures and I'll post that on my Instagram and I do a flipogram on YouTube. Um, what I have in the oven is my um, meatloaf that I made once before. That was my last week I made it. It was my first time ever making meatloaf. I got the recipe from my favorite Puerto Rican cook on YouTube, Evelyn Dominguez. Gracias. Um, so it's her recipe. Um, and I'll probably go into what I put. It's um, I put a whole five pounds of, of um, hamburger meat. Um, I preheat the oven to 450. And then it's the hamburger meat. She does two pounds. I do five pounds because it's probably more in my family. Um, and then um, you put egg, half a cup of milk, an egg, a cup of breadcrumbs. Um, and then you put all the spices you want. You put the Puerto Rican sofrito seasoning. Um, three spoons of that. She does two. I put three on each side because I season one whole side of it inside the bowl. And then I flip it over and season Again, the same thing on the other side, and then I mix it all up. So again, it's a cup of breadcrumbs, a half a cup of milk, one um, large egg, and then I put regular salt, seasoning salt, onion powder, garlic powder. I put another ad adobo powder, which is like garlic powder with pepper, um, black pepper, um, um, sazon. It's a Puerto Rican sazon. It's kind of like Mrs. Dash, but of course more flavorful. Um, and I believe that's it. And I don't know if I said seasoning sauce. I put seasoning sauce. And then you just mix it all up. Flip it over. Mix it up again. And form the meatloaf. Um, it's like a square rounded shape. Like the norm, typical meatloaf. Um, oh my god. Shape. And then you put it. I put in a flat cookie sheet pan. But I coat it with um, aluminum foil. Then I put it in there, shape it, get it all nice and shaped. And then I put aluminum foil on top and I seal it on all the sides. Then we lower the temperature to 350. And then we put it in for 45 minutes, which just my beeper was telling me it's just up. So I'm going to turn it around, uncover it, and do another 45 minutes. So that is it in the oven. Don't mind my oven. It's time for some cleaning. It's not terribly bad, but it is time for um, a little bit extra <laughs> easy oven off. So I'm going to take that right there and I'm going to uncover it. So that's the way it looks uncovered in the inside. Of course, you can see in the middle top it is not cooked. So you do need to leave it another 45 minutes. But we're going to do the next 45 minutes uncovered. So I'm going to take this aluminum foil off. I'm going to re-put it back in the oven, set my timer for 45 minutes, and I'll either add to this video or show you pictures of the final touch. So hang on. So I set the timer for another 45 minutes uncovered. So it's in there like that. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it'll be done. And I also added oregano. She puts more oregano than I would like, and so I just put enough to give it that taste but not overwhelm it. Um, I don't know why I'm showing the camera towards this. So those are my seasonings right there. Um, it was regular garlic powder, seasoning salt, onion powder, adobo, which is like a garlic powder with pepper, um, sazon, it's all purpose seasoning. A lot of Puerto Ricans use it, that's why it's called sazon. Um, regular black pepper, and um, the oregano I used is up here, so it's like that. I put very little because last time I followed how, how much she put in it, and it was perfect and delicious, but just a little bit more than I 
care for it. So this time I said, okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna keep it there to give it that flavor because it does need the flavor of oregano, but not too much. Um, so those are the seasonings that I used. And of course I use, right here is the sofrito that I used. I made this a couple of days ago. Um, when I made the last sofrito, which is a little bit less than a week, it can stay in the bottom for a little bit over a week or maybe a week and a couple of days, but you should actually freeze it if you make more. I didn't make that much, so just enough to fill this jar. So next time I'm going to make um, two or three times the amount. I'm going to put it in cube trays, ice trays, and form it in cubes and then put it in a Ziploc bag and save it in the freezer. It lasts a whole lot longer. And I titled it so nobody would get it mixed up. See, it says Puerto Rican sofrito, even though this was a cactus jar. So I save these jars, any type of jars that come like that, which are like... Tostitos dip jar and I'll put like this one I save my chicken broth in these I've been getting lately it's the same as this big one but it's just a smaller jar and I save these so when my husband opens a can of jalapenos instead of leaving it in a can it's not good to leave it in that metal tin can um, I wash them out as you can see they're soaking in dishwashing liquid I'll rinse it out with very hot water several times make sure the soap is out of there and it's nice and clean and disinfected and then I'll fill them up with either jalapenos like which I just did which is over here he just opened a can of jalapenos and did like a botana it's like a or dorp kind of tray so I'll title it this is my printing machine my label machine that I use to print even when it comes to my makeup collection anything and I use it a lot now for my food as well so I'll title this jalapenos so that's what's in here that it was originally cactus and I had them all washed and disinfected and I have several of them in my cabinet so whenever I need to add something to it it could be like tomato sauce jalapenos extra cactus sofrito anything that needs to go in the jar and be refrigerated to keep fresh and good I'll do that so this is what it was this is a cactus. This is an actual cactus. I haven't used this one yet. Right now, I'm going to make like a... We call it botana. I don't know how you would really say it. It's like chips and dip. Like you put like pieces of cut up ham. You put um, your chips. And you put like this. I'll be mixing cut up tomato with onion. And I'll put cilantro. And I'll put the cactus and I'll whip it around so it chops it all up nice and choppy and then I put it in a dish and I could and we usually use that with tostadas so we can make cactus tostadas so I'll use these tostadas or we'll do chips and this one I'm going to accompany actually the meatloaf for me but we just did one for him for his friend it's his birthday which is our friend and neighbor it's his 50th birthday so I did one for him like I said it's the tomato the onion cilantro and the cactus and we put it in here and then we put this on the top and we turn it around and it chops it really good so it makes it like a I want to say absorbs but not really absorbs like appetizers appetizers that's what botana means appetizer oh my god it finally hit me so I'll do that and then I'll set it aside in a bowl cover it and so when my meatloaf is done and my mashed potatoes are done we can you can add that to it as another side dish with the meatloaf and the potatoes or we can save it later and do it like I said with tostadas or chips or whatever we feel like doing later it'll be plenty to save um, so yeah these are the two cactus ones I bought four today so um, got these at grocery outlet they were only like a dollar seventy nine I want to say a dollar twenty nine one of those um, but it's real good and they have I used to buy the big ones they didn't have the big ones today they have the small ones so I love love cactus we call it nopales in Spanish I bought some tomatoes of course my husband has a garden so he had I'm sorry <laughs> he had um, onions from the yard which are very delicious but I have some here in case I need some onions and I can't get him to get it out of the yard so I'm gonna check on my potatoes and I'll be back so I just turned um, my potatoes off and I'm going to smash them. The wanimas are done. The wanimas are made with cornmeal. And you put, let me see if I can find it in here real quick. Um, sorry, my microwave it has got a lot of stuff on it. Coconut milk. Um, I like to put, um, oh, that's not it. 
Well, today I put um, sweet condensed creamer. Yesterday I didn't because I wanted it more like a salty type of meal to accompany the pork and the turkey burgers. But today I made them a little bit more sweeter. But normally it's two cups of the cornmeal, a cup of all-purpose flour, one can of coconut milk, which is the one I showed you here, one can of evaporated milk, um, four teaspoons of sugar, and I add one teaspoon of salt, which is, I also got this recipe from Evelyn Dominguez because she cooks just like my mom, um, because it just wasn't, it was perfect and delicious again yesterday, but it wasn't completely, it could, it could have used a little bit more salt. So I did that today. So again, what did I say? Two cups of cornmeal, one cup of all-purpose flour, one can of coconut milk, one can of evaporated milk, four teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, um, yesterday I didn't put the condensed, sweet condensed creamer today. I did. We'll see how it comes out today. Um, and what else? Oh, chicken broth. I put in chicken broth and that's it. And you stir it around in the pot until it starts boiling and it gets to a very, very clumpy, thick consistency. And then you let it cool down because you're going to put in your hand, form a ball, and then you start to form like a banana shape, or you could do it a flat shape. Yesterday I did the banana shape. Today I did a flat shape. And then you can accompany it with your dinner or depending how sweet it comes out today. Yesterday I wanted like a, a regular food, not like a dessert. So I did like a salty, a little bit more of a salty um, feel today because I added the condensed sweet condensed creamer. It's going to be a little sweet. So I probably could eat it by itself or again, accompany with my food. I'll take pictures because I don't have an editing program, like I said many, many times before. So the my uh, video will only pause for so many minutes. And if I don't continue it, I have to do a part two, if you want to call it that way, or a uh, a clip um, so um, yeah so I just wanted to share with you kind of what I'm doing today like I said I did this meatloaf last week for the first time and it came out so perfect and so delicious and um, I'm remember I'm getting ideas from what I remember the way my mom used to do things and I'm combining it um, with Evelyn Dominguez or using her recipe because it's so close to how my mother used to cook and I just love her to death um, one day I have to thank Evelyn Dominguez for changing my life, for um, helping me to learn and create a passion for cooking and especially Puerto Rican food. So um, I wish my mom could have met her. I wish my mom could have been here to be proud and give me her thumb or her seal of approval. But she's not here, so I just have to believe that she's in heaven watching down on me, smiling from ear to ear and proud, like I said yesterday in my blog clips. My kitchen... I like a clean house, organized house. That's been all my life. And when I cook, I clean as I go. But there's a couple of things here and there. So you see like my old glove, which I just bought two new gloves. But those are more decorations. So I'm going to get two more of these gloves. I was kind of mentioning that um, in my um, blog. Um, so I'm going to get two more gloves. Um, that is not dirty up there. <laughs> that is burnt. It we had a pan that like caught on fire and it kind of burnt that. So we need to replace that thing because it's not dirty. It's just, we haven't had a chance, but we'll, we're going to be replacing all of that. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to keep these for decorations and I'm going to buy two more to use actually to um, hold the hot pots and stuff. And then I bought it with the matching um, towel here, which says friends, fam, faith family and friends which is what I'm all about so um, that was perfect so I'm just gonna get more of these towels because I'm already I had two and so they were here folded up really cute and I started using one so um, and I need to get some covers here because I use foil to keep the actual plates clean but I've been cooking the last three days so every three days I try to change it maximum a week so this one's almost ready. You can see some, it's clean, but it's just like stuff from the cooking. But um, I got to fill up my canister jars. I usually keep rice, flour, two things of rice because I get a lot of rice and flour. And this is the thing to hold my big utensils. It's a bucket that I bought. This one has all lids, even though there's a bowl drying above that, but it holds all my lids. And I got to put my plates away. That's what I'm seeing. This is where I hold my measuring cups and spoons are all right here, right at the reach of my hand. Um, 
I got my fruits, oranges and bananas there, my Slim Fast cappuccino, my Tribio sugar, coffee for my husband, our coffee maker, my blender, my crock pots, my husband's beer, refrigerator, and I just reorganized the top of that. I just went over 15 minutes. I hope it allows me to upload this clip. This microwave we're throwing away the other day, a tree fell down and they had to shut the power and this microwave didn't work anymore. Thank God we had to. And this one even worked always better than this one. It just had, it just heated up things a whole lot better, even though this one was good. So we're going to go ahead and throw that away. My dog food in their canister. So that's our microwave. These are my banana holder things, even though I have my bananas over there. Olive oil. So I'm just giving you a mini tour, which I didn't plan on, of my kitchen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope this will allow, allow me to upload because it's at 15 minutes and 49 seconds. So I'll either do pictures of the final looks of everything or I'll do another little clip, blog clip. So stay tuned. Okay, anyway, this is the wanime. It does taste a little bit um, sweeter than yesterday because I did add the sweet condensed milk. It's a really th thick, sweet, um, creamery type of thing. And so I like that because we got to taste two different sides of it. So now I know when I want it sweeter, I'll use a sweet condensed uh, milk, which can be called La Lechera as well. There's different brands, but um, this was the Family Delight brand. It's sweet condensed creamer. There's also sweet condensed milk. Um, I'm not sure what really the difference is. They look the same to me. I'll try to find out what the difference is. So if I want it sweeter, I just know that I'm going to add this. And maybe not even the salt. But considering it has salt and sugar, it's not too bad. But it is sweeter than yesterday. Yesterday was more like a tamale. And so it was more saltier. Um, come on, you can come in, son. My son, he gets worried when I'm doing videos. So that's what it looks like. And it tastes... It's like that type of consistency. It's really good. So now I know how to do it two different ways. And it looks like the Puerto Rican pastele because it's wrapped in foil. Pastele in Puerto Rican is uh, biggest famous traditional foods. It's made with pork meat. It looks like a masa type. And it's made out of um, guineos verdes, um, which is green bananas, pork meat. Some people can put spice in it. Most people don't. But it's like our famous, most biggest tradition food. When I go to the Puerto Rican festival and I'm YouTubing, I'll let you see what a pastel looks like. That is my dream. My ultimate dream is to learn how to make that. I have an idea because I've been watching videos, especially Evelyn Dominguez. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to definitely try that. But I'm just trying everything else before that. Because another thing that stops me is the ingredients that I need for such a big famous Puerto Rican dish is a lot of the ingredients you don't find it here in the town that I'm in I have to go to a big really bigger city which is usually like the Bay Area New York Chicago those kind of types of city so the closest to me is the Bay Area so when I go to Hayward around that area I need to write my list and make sure I pick up everything from there and then bring it back that's the only way to make it they don't have it here and that's why I haven't made it yet um, so I'm learning everything else before that um, so that's what it looks like um like I said, you make it into a thick, consistency, thick, clumpy. Let it cool down. You put it in. We put it in, um, what do you call that? Parli not parliament. Parliament paper? That white, waxy paper. Or you could put it just in the foil itself. We wrap it up and then fold it at the ends like two or three times. And then you let the water boil. Once it starts boiling, then you put all these in. You could save some for later. You don't have to cook them all at the same time. Um, today I did. Yesterday I saved the other half for later in the afternoon. Um, but once the water is boiling, you put it in the pot and you let it for 30 minutes. I kind of turn them over and let them another 15 minutes. Um, so that's what a wanim is. And some parts of Puerto Rico will call it wanimo. And they'll add, um, the ingredients can vary, but not by much. Very little. Um, they're, they're pretty much the same. Um, one or two things might vary or a little bit more, a little bit less, something like that. But I wish you guys could taste it through YouTube. I'm hoping this will upload because it wasn't letting me upload anything over 15 minutes. I'm at almost 20 minutes. Um, so there's 10 minutes left for my meatloaf in the oven. And if I don't do another um, blog clip, I'll show you pictures and I'll put that as the profile of the blog video. So yeah.
nine more minutes now. And then everything else is done. That's my son. I already did the mashed potatoes. So here are the mashed potatoes. And I just add butter and salt to desire taste. Um, and I like them really soft. Um, I did my appetizer, which was the cactus with tomatoes, onions, and cilantro. So I could do that with, like I said, the tostadas. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff on my thing, <laughs> but I had three crock pots up here. I finally had to put two away and I kept this one down here for a quick access. These are my snacks, my healthy snacks. It's like trail mix. Like I said, tostadas, my blender where I make all my healthy smoothies. My husband and my son are the only one that drink coffee in the family. So coffee, I had to stack up because my slim fast has been on sale and I've been buying it like crazy. It's like $5.98 on sale. It's normally eight something. So I got three cans and then this is my favorite cappuccino. I could drink, make a hot cappuccino or I could make a, a iced cappuccino and it's sugar free. Then my husband's son, that's the kind of coffee they like. I use Trivia Sugar on everything that needs sugar. It's so much healthier and it's so much sweeter and better than sugar. Then we have regular sugar for like my son and my husband. They like regular sugar. That's my shredder. That's where I did the appetizer and when it cuts, takes chunks of tomato, onions or whatever, fruits or vegetables and it chops it up. Those are my meal prep plan organizers that I did. Uh, I think I did an Instagram picture. I haven't really did a video on that, but I just ordered it from Amazon. Haven't gotten to use it yet. Filters. These things are juice um, dispensers. So you put juice in it and it has the spout. But right now they're not in use. But I have them for like my autism march that I do. I, um, we actually, my daughter actually ordered them for her wedding. And then she ended up giving them to me and I use them for the march where I do the blue drink. But now I just got them filled up with my favorite fruits, which are bananas for my smoothies. And oranges. And I got extra oranges, bananas here. This actually hooks up on the bottom of that, this part on the bottom. And then there's a thing that goes in the middle that you can put ice in. Those are those jars I was talking about. Just in case we missed it, my measuring spoons. And that's pretty much it. I'm just waiting for, this is my spice cabinet. I just, we just reorganized all, the, that's my garbage bag that I'm gonna throw away in the big dumpster outside. I just organized all the bottom cabinets, I mean, Oh, I had stuff that I didn't even know I had. It was so exciting, but it was such a relief to just clear it out and organize it. So now I know where my pots are, my pans are, my baking dishes are and stuff. And now I'm going to work on the top. That one's pretty much good. Um, this one, what does this have? These just have my glasses and cups and um, smoothie um, cups and stuff. So that one's fine. Um, I have to organize this one, which has like, this is where I usually have like hamburger helper, flour, corn starch, macaroni and cheese for the family and stuff. Cause I'm eating healthier. So I don't eat macaroni and cheese or any sweets anymore that like cakes and cookies and candy. I've never really been a candy person. This one is really the cereal area. The top ramen soups and cereals are here, um, crackers and stuff. So that one's pretty good. I just got to organize it cause some of the cereal has gone. This one I just keep extra, like that's for my Puerto Rican Coquito around Christmas time. And I think I just have extra coffee cans up there. This is the one that I really have to work on, which is my um, canned foods, seasonings, rice, bean packages. I have to really clean out and organize it. Um, this one I also have to do. So it's pretty much this, these two that I have to work on. This is like my baking sprays oils, medicines on this side, pop tarts, oatmeal, package of sugar, any healthy um, powders, my green teas or any teas because I love teas. I'm into all different flavors, um, corn, uh, moto meal, just stuff like that. Any spice, uh, not spices, but um, bacon bits up there. Just stuff like that. My green tea, I've been into this right now. I have one back there as well. This is the Crystal Light. You don't have to add any sugar at all. It's the most healthiest thing that I can drink of that I find that I like. I'm not really a mango person, but I really like this one. This is the only flavor they really had. A peach by itself or peach mango. They didn't have any more peach, so I thought, let me try peach mango. It's the green tea. Green tea is really healthy for you. I love Crystal Light. It's really healthy. You don't have to add sugar. It doesn't have that much sugar in it um so this is like the healthiest thing that i can find that's delicious 
tasty. I feel like I'm not missing out. It's healthy. It has my green tea, which is always good for you. And here I do like the mango. And what I do is I take it even, I carry a couple of extra packets in my um, purse. I think it comes with maybe six packets. So the packets are like that. And I'll keep an extra two or three in my purse. So if I go to a restaurant and eat instead of being tempting, which I'm really not a soda person. I've always been juice and water since I was a kid. But sometimes when I go to restaurants, that's all they have. So I'll use the Axe for soda. And so this stops me. I'll just ask them for just ice water. And then when they bring it to me, I'll... Um, pour a little bit of the packet because this packet could do three to four drinks it's that good that sweet um so i pour a little bit of it stir it up and i already have my drink i'm drinking healthy and i'm not having to sacrifice and i save money as well because each drink is like almost four dollars so it's crazy so yeah this cabinet is not horribly bad but i do have to work on it um i constantly have to clean the refrigerator because between me and my husband cooking and things going in and out I have to do that almost like every other day or every two days and then I organize that up there with all my extra like I have a brand new coffee pot when ever this goes bad which we just got this one for Christmas for my son we have an extra we have an extra crock pot which actually is this crock pot here the other two are put away and then we have the cake popper machine the cotton candy machine that we had for the autism that we didn't even get to use because the electricity wasn't working like we thought those are the things that i say you put in the middle of these drink things right here and you can put the ice in the middle so it keeps the drink cold and i have a couple of cleaners there i was soaking my feet with epsom salt my mother was a huge believer in epsom salt for twists spraying sore achy anything and it absolutely works i've been soaking i actually bought this um pan it's for my feet so i've been putting epsom salt in hot water and just been soaking my feet every night because they have been killing me like beyond belief and i think because i stand and walk on them a lot i've been cooking like crazy and i'm just always going 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 so i bought this was only like two dollars and it had the lid so at night I'll soak my feet in there, pour some Epsom salt. So yeah, and that's my dining room over there. We, I just bought the material to make my curtains. So I'll be showing you all this in another video. But my daughter sews on the machine. So she sewed the top and the bottom and the sides and make my curtains. And But I'll be showing because I'm into home decor and I'm redecorating my house. So And I'm not done with the kitchen. So I'll really show you as I'm going through the process and the final look of it. So two minutes left for the meatloaf. But I also don't want to do more than 30 minutes. Oh, it's down to 58 seconds. So I'll show you what it looks and I'll let this video go. And it'll be into the next video, which I'm sure will be soon. So I'll show you what it looks like when the things count down. That's my living room over there. What is on there? Oh, my daughter just came back from the dam from swimming, so she put her bag and her towel there. My purse is there because we went to the grocery store. I just reorganized and cleaned out my entertainment center. We have a huge collection of movies. I'm into movies. My son's into movies. And we have a humongous collection. I think I did a video on my collection, which I'll show you real quick. Is this one's mine? That's my board game collection, which I did a video on, and my movie collection. I started out with VHSs, then when they stopped making them, I did the DVDs. But my husband had all his down there, and he wasn't even watching them anymore, so we got rid of them and just kept the important ones. Oh, my thing is ringing. Let's go. So, this is the final look of my meatloaf. Look amazing! Look at that! Look at that. It is, it's very cooked because what I do is I take a knife and I split it open to make sure the meat is cooked even though I've done this before so I know that's all it takes is 45 minutes covered and 45 minutes uncovered at 350 degrees. I just cannot wait to taste it. I'll do pictures and I'll let you know later how it came out. Thank you so much for watching and going through this cooking with Carmen. I guess I'm going to call it our what's for dinner at Carmen's or what's for dinner at the Taurus family. So I'm going to cut the video off here because it's almost at 30 minutes and I try not to go longer than that. So I'll do another blog and I'll let you know, show you pictures or just let you know how it turned out. So thanks very much. Into my next video. Thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So until my next video, take care you guys. Bye.